Good morning and a warm welcome, Sage here, and you're watching Calkine TV live from the Sydney studio. And this is the Global Markets Roundup show. Let's take a glance at how the global markets rounded up globally, starting from the US market. The S&P 500 eked out its fifth straight record, closing high on Wednesday as investors ended the month and the quarter by largely shrugging off positive economic data and looking forward to Friday's highly anticipated employment report. The S&P 500 was up 0.13% and the Dow Jones gained 0.61%. The Nasdaq Composite fell 0.17% and the small cap Russell 2000 was up 0.07%. Let us now look at some important economic data announcements that impacted the overall market scenario. The S&P 500 and tech-heavy Nasdaq saw successive record closes in recent days as the US economic recovery continued to gather pace. The indexes rose by 14% and 12% respectively in the first half of 2021. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was also up 12% during the period. It was the second best first half performance for S&P 500 since 1998. In Wednesday, session five of the 11 critical sectors of the S&P index advanced, led by the energy stocks. Additionally, prices of air tickets, rental cars and hotel bookings shot up ahead of the Independence Day celebrations on the 4th of July. Prices of fireworks, which are typically used in such celebrations, have soared due to a global shipping backlog of Chinese goods due to the pandemic. And moving on now to the newsmakers. The stock of Chinese ride-hailing company DD Global Inc. popped a high of more than 17% in the intraday trade after its debut on the New York Stock Exchange, taking its valuation to around 80 billion US dollars. However, it closed 1% up from the offering price at the close, bringing its valuation to about 68 billion US dollars. It was one of the biggest US IPOs by a Chinese company since 2014 after Alibaba Group's public offer. Meanwhile, the semiconductor maker Micron Technology Inc. stock jumped 2.36% after analysis gave a favourable ranking on the stock performance in the coming quarters, attributing to the continued demand for chips in 2022, which is expected to boost its pricing dynamics. And Micron Technology was expected to release its quarterly results after the market closes. Other technology stocks such as Apple Inc. gained 0.63%, Microsoft Corp. declined 0.28% and Facebook Inc. ticked down 0.97%. ASML Holdings declined 2.05% and Intel Corp. declined 1.67%. Advanced Micro Devices Inc. jumped 5.07%. In the energy stocks, Exxon Mobile Corp. rose 0.90% and Chevron Corporation gained 1.03% and Petro China Company Limited gained 3.16%. Total Energy's SE ticked down, however, 0.95%. And now it's time for a short break, but please stay tuned with Calkine TV as I bring you more of the trending market updates. This is Andy Liu broadcasting from Calkine Media Studio in Australia and I'll be hosting the new Calkine Wellness Show. The half hour show will cover topics from how wellness as a concept has become even more significant during COVID to how becoming vegan may improve your health and much more. We are excited to showcase our live streaming show to our audience of millions overseas and in Australia. Tune in to Calkine TV and join me. Welcome back. You're watching Sage on Calkine TV and we are live from the Sydney studios and this is the Global Markets Roundup show. Let's move on now to the next stock update. Stocks of the automobile manufacturers Ford Motor Company fell 1.13% and Volkswagen AG fell 2.66% while General Motors Co advanced 0.50%. Industrial stocks such as Honeywell International Inc. increased 1.75%, Caterpillar Inc. gained 1.19% and General Electric Company rose 3.17%. 3M Company advanced 1.28% and Deere and Company advanced 1.04%. Boeing Company's stock jumped as well 1.74%. Let's move on now to the oil space. 
Oil prices rose on Wednesday, heading for the monthly and quarterly gains after the US crude stockpiles fell for a sixth straight week. And an OPEC report foresaw an undersupplied market this year. The Brent crude contract for August, due to expire on Wednesday, ended the session up 37 cents or 0.5 percent at $75.13 a barrel. The September contract rose 34 cents to settle at 74 cents 62 a barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude settled up 49 cents or 0.7 percent, reaching $73.47 a barrel. We'll take a look now at the yellow metal space. Gold nudged up on Wednesday but was headed for its largest monthly decline since November 2016 as investors were very weary ahead of the upcoming U.S. jobs data that could intensify fears over the U.S. Federal Reserve easing its asset purchases. And the gold futures were up 0.39% per ounce, silver increased 1.48% per ounce, while copper rose as well 0.64%. The 30-year Treasury bond yields were down, however, 0.41%, while the 10-year bond yields decreased 0.81%. The US dollar futures index rose 0.34%. And this is how the US market fared last night. It is time for another short break, but we'll be back to look at the UK stock market soon. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Thank you for joining us. You're watching Sage on Kalkine TV live from Sydney, and this is the Global Markets Roundup show. We were about to take a look at the European and the UK markets. European shares ended lower on Wednesday as investors locked in gains after a five-month winning streak with concerns over an eventual spike in inflation and the Delta variant of the coronavirus also pushing some money off the table. The pan-European stock 600 closed 0.8% lower but rose 1.4% in June, its fifth straight month of gains. The index is up 14.4% this year. The London markets traded in a red zone after the release of disappointing UK GDP figures. According to the Office of National Statistics, the UK GDP contracted by approximately 1.6% during the quarter, one of the financial year 2021 as a, compared to the previous quarter. Indivior shares surged by about 6.47% after Dixon's. Carphone shares climbed by approximately 6.59% and Serco Group shares dropped by around 0.73%. Wednesday Group shares rose by around 5.98%. And now we'll take a look at the Asia markets, starting with Tokyo. Well, Japanese shares dipped on Wednesday as a highly contagious Delta variant spread in Asia, while the benchmark index posted losses for June on concerns over the outlook of the economy. And the market ended the last trading day of the month in the red for the 10th straight month as investors tended to adjust their positions at the month's end. And the Nikkei's average dipped 0.07% to close after rising as much as 0.65% earlier in the session, while the broader topics changed course to edge down 0.30%. Moving on now to Shanghai. China's stocks ended higher on Wednesday, with the major tech indexes booking their biggest quarterly gains in a year on policy support from Beijing and strong earnings expectations. The blue chip CSI 300 index closed or rose 0.7%, while the Shanghai Composite Index firmed 0.5%. Also aided by the soft factory activity data that soothed the fears of the policy tightening. Let us now look at the Seoul market. Gains in the technology stocks drove the South Korean shares higher on Wednesday as better than expected Chinese factory data and a strong US consumer confidence report lifted the investor sentiments. The won strengthened while the benchmark bond yield fell. 
The benchmark Kospi rose 0.30% at the close of the trade. It gained 2.9% in June, notching its eighth straight monthly gain. And this is how the Asian market fared. It is time for a short break. After the break, we will take a look at the UK stock market. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. Welcome back. You're watching Sage on Calkine TV live from Sydney and this is the Global Markets Roundup show. Let us take a look at the Australian markets. The Australian shares are likely to open the new financial year weaker on Thursday amid lockdowns and movement restrictions in various parts of the country due to the latest surge in locally acquired coronavirus cases of the Delta variant. The Australian and New Zealand dollars were under pressure on Wednesday as the spread of the highly infectious Delta variant of COVID-19 challenged confidence in the economic recoveries both at home and globally. The Aussie fell 0.7% overnight to erase four days of gains and the Kiwi lost 0.7% to as low as $0.6980. On Wednesday, mild profit booking was seen in the U.S. technology space, leading to a fall of 0.18% in the Nasdaq 100 after making a record high on Tuesday. And big tech names in Australia, such as Afterpay Limited, Zero Limited and Zipco Limited, could also witness some profit bookings in today's session. Australian oil companies such as Santos Limited, Oil Search Limited and Woodside Petroleum Limited could rise in today's session. The gold miners such as St. Barbara Limited, Silver Lake Resources Limited and DeGray Mining Limited may also show some upside momentum today. Falling commodity prices could impact the local miners such as BHP Group Limited, Fortescue Metals Group Limited and Rio Tinto Limited today. And thanks for joining us on our first report for the day. And that's all for now. But please stay tuned with Calkine TV for more live market updates and expert talks. We will be back with more of the news on the markets, economy and diverse themes and sectors shortly. Sage signing off.